So today, we're going to talk about research questions. You should all have, by now, begun, you should all have begun the research topic questions, because these are due by Friday. I need to see these on, by Friday, before vacation. Yes, ma'am? Is it okay if you're, like, really, like, set on one idea, and you already have, you only have one? Uh, I asked for two. Okay. But you, can, you don't have to put much time into your second one, okay? So you need to have at least two of these out here. I looked at one in the other class, and they just, they just filled out these two sections, not their other ideas for articles. You need to have something written in at least one more of these boxes here for Friday. So once you have your ideas, the next thing in life is to come up with questions to help you um, focus your writing better. Because you might have this big thing, hockey players. Well, what about hockey players? So we're going to learn about the different kinds of questions. And who, who knows if I said a KWL chart? Something you would do only at school, probably. Do you know what it is? Oh. What is it, Lauren? Um, the N stands for no, and the W stands for what you want to know, and the L means what you learn. Right. Exactly. K stands for what you already know, W, what you want to know, and L is what you did learn. So sometimes teachers set it up as um, a chart like this. And they write out the words know, what I know, what I want to learn, what I've learned. And then you fill in the information here. I know that cats have whiskers. Cats. Cats have whiskers. I want to know when they became pets. I learned not all cats can be pets, like tigers, like the big cats. No, Tyler is not a cat. There. Um, can you get the door, Nora? Uh, whatever, Nora. So, so the first thing is I'm going to show a short video about the, using the KWL charts to um, make your writing to organize your thinking. Oh, I just erased my own books. Silly me. So, and then we'll talk about the question, different types of questions. Um, please put that down. How do you start research for writing an informational text? In this lesson, you will learn how to develop research questions by asking, what do I already know about the topic? Let's review. An informational text teaches you facts. So we have our nonfiction or real topic that we decided was Powhatan settler relations. We also want to make sure we review the writing process. There are three steps. Generate ideas, write drafts, and revise and edit. We're in the first stage, generate ideas, because we are thinking about what we know and what we don't know about our topic. A common mistake when thinking about what you know and don't know about your topic is jumping right into your research without any direction. You want to make sure you plan out the questions you have about your topic and the answers so that when you're ready to write your draft, it'll flow very smoothly. Let's get started. First, create a KWL chart. Then ask, what do I already know about the topic? And finally, record what you know in the chart. First, create a KWL chart, and that looks like this, with three sections. The first section is for the no, that's the K, what you already know about the topic. The second is the W, what you want to know. These are the questions you have about your topic. And the L is learn, for what you're going to learn about the topic when you find your resources. Then you're going to ask, what do I already know about the topic? So let's take a look at our topic, Powhatan Settler Relations. And I'm going to think about what I've learned in social studies class about Native Americans in Jamestown. And I know that Powhatans live near Jamestown because they were angry about the land, and so they had to live near them to be able to interact with them. 
And I also know that Pocahontas kept peace between the people. She was um, played a big role between them becoming peaceful later on, so I know that. And I also know that the Native Americans taught settlers about the land. I remember that it was very cold and they had a bad winter, and they helped them farm. So those are the things I already know about my topic. Now I'm going to record what I know on the chart. So here's my KWL chart again. And in the notes section, I'm going to write, Powhatans live near Jamestown. They taught settlers about the land to survive. And Pocahontas kept peace between the people. So in later lessons, I'm going to fill in my W and my L section when I think about my questions and my answers. We created a KWL chart. We asked, what do I already know about the topic? And we recorded what we knew in the chart. In this lesson, you have learned how to develop research questions by asking, what do I already know about the topic? Okay, so that's one of the things that you need to start with when you're doing your project. Now, if you look on page eight, I could read all this to you or have you read it out loud, but this is this handout on page 8 and 9 is for you to use as reference as you work through this project. I want to go over some of them. There's a couple of main ideas of types of questions, research questions. The first one is a factual question. Factual question answers who, what, when, where, how. Who are the women of Olympic sports? Who, or um, what, um, Equipment do hockey players need? Um, what's your what are ideas are your topics? What's your topic ideas? Uh, San Jose Sharks history. What was it? San Jose Sharks history. San Jose Sharks. Okay. When did the San Jose Sharks start? That was really that can be answered yes, no, facts only. Another group of kinds of questions are the interpreter questions. And these are a little trickier, but they are more thinking kinds of questions. And this is really important. So one of the, those kinds of thinking questions is, are called hypotheticals. They're theories. What would have happened if the South had won the Civil War? I don't want an answer right now, but that might be a question. You might think, what would have happened if um, the San Jose Sharks um, had not started as a team. What's your topic? Um, or one of your topics, ideas? Uh, space race. Okay. What would have happened if Russia had won the space race? How would, our, how, would, how would that impact our lives? So that's what a hypothetical is. Something that really hasn't happened, but, but you have to think about that. The other is a prediction kind of question. And that is, how will something look or be in the future based on what we know now, based on the facts now? So will there be more women participating in Olympic sports in the future? Or will there be less opportunities? Yes. Um, are we allowed to write our chart from a non fiction text question? You can, yeah. And what did you say about the who, what, where? Those are what kind of questions? The who, what, when, where? Yes, sir? What, are those what kinds is of the space race anyway? Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. What is the what are those kinds of questions that are the who, what, when, where, the answer those begins with an F? Factual questions. Factual questions. And I don't think this person remembered it. I think he referred back to his handout. That's why you have a handout to refer back to it to help you remember. Good use of the handout. Excellent. Okay. So we have hypothet factual, hypothetical, prediction. The third category of questions is solution. What's the answer? How are we going to prevent dolphins from becoming extinct? How are we going to get more women to participate in Olympic sports? And I haven't forgotten your question, but I'm going to wait until we're done because it's off topic. Does that make sense? Okay. The fourth kind of hypothetical question is the comparison, where you find similarities and differences. So it might be, um, what is the difference between using a wooden bat and an aluminum bat in baseball? 
what is the um, difference between sports that women participate in and sports that men participate in? What is the difference in the amount of money Russia puts into the space race and the United States puts into the space race or other countries? And then the last one is judgment based on the information you find. What is your informed opinion about the subject? So does money, the amount of money put into the space race, make a difference in the ultimate outcome? Um, does having rules about which bat to use make a difference in the outcome of the game? Those are judgment things. So there's, what kinds of questions are there? Factual, in, interpretive, um, solution, comparison, judgment, prediction, hypo, hypothetical, Great decoding and referring back to your sheet. Now, what do each of those mean? What does factual mean? What does factual qu kinds of questions mean? Um, they're true. They're true. So give me an example of a factual question. Tigers are usually hairy. Is that a fact or is that a factual question? Oh, oh. Use that same example. Are tigers usually orange? Are usually tigers usually orange? Another example of a factual question. Um, how many players are hockey players usually fast? Okay, and I like how you caught yourself. You were starting to make a statement, and you changed it to a question. Or not a question. Factual questions answer who, what, when, where, those basic questions. Okay, what's a hypothetical question? Yes, sir. It's a question that, um, that asks what would happen if something had changed in the past. Excellent. Um, mm -hmm. Prediction question. Yes, ma'am. Based on what you know now. So, yeah. like, you think that you might have a test, but then it gets worse. Okay, um, solution questions. What are solution questions? Birthday boy, you got one? You know, an example of a solution question? Uh. And they'll hand oh, you the I reference sheet, that helps. <laughs> Global warming be ah. I don't know. You don't know. Okay, who can help him with a solution problem? A solution question. Yes. Um, That's different from what's written on the paper. Like, if like, if global warming happened a long time ago, how would things be different today? Yeah. Oh well, that's more of a prediction. A solution problem is. Question is, um, well, I have an example. It, okay. Um, um, what would happen? Or, um, how could uh, rhinovirus be stopped? Yeah, how could rhinovirus, which is a basically a cold, yeah. Okay. Or what? What solutions are there for minimizing that? Okay. How about a comparison question? What's that look like? Colors, different and sizes, and more vicious, and more vicious. temperament. Great example. Did you? Were you raising your hand, or were you just stretching? Stretching. That's perfectly fine. And the last kind of question is a judgment question. No, thank you. What's a judgment question? Yes, sir. 
like um should um should players now um be able to sort of wear different cleats or should they be the same? Exactly. It's an opinion question based on facts. Yep. Or it could be judged on so what we're going to do next, um, and this is, you have 10 minutes, or closer to 8 minutes, to work out, start this, but then you are going to, this is for homework too, to begin to get, begin your homework. You don't have to have all of this filled out. On pages 10, 11, 12, and 13 are a place, uh, so I'm just going to look at the feature article question one. So you put your focus here. Now, if you were doing a 25-page paper, you might have six research questions. Magazine articles are, say that louder, please. Say it louder, please. Short, so they need to be more focused. So even though you might have three questions, when you actually write your article, you may only answer one of those questions. So you're going to put your question here, and then the type of question. Is it a judgment question? Is it a factual question? Is it an interpretive question? You're going to put that there. Any questions? Thoughts? Concerns? Focus, yeah. So if you were doing the space race, his article, what, his feature article might be, um, who's the first person who lives on the moon? Neil Armstrong. So it might be, or walked in the moon, Neil Armstrong might be his focus. So his question might be, who was Neil Armstrong? And that's a factual question. Okay. Uh, can they all be the same type of question? They could be, but would that be provide for the most interesting pizzazzy writing? If you were reading a magazine, would you want all of the information to be exactly the same kind of information? No. No. So think about that. Think about right. your reader. Yeah. Like, oh, no. Yep, you remember that I said no. You wouldn't. You don't have to have all six so we, filled in. We can just, like, do you can do one or two for each of them. You might have for feature articles. You might have like five or six ideas, or five, four or five. And for your opinion article, you have only one idea because like, you really oh, want that opinion. So like, so like you use, you use like your thing in the back where it says like for your, your choices for you. Yeah, on the front page. Yes. Yep. Yep. On page one. Okay. You can cut the lesson now.